Hello everyone! The clip you're about to hear is from one of our exclusive Patreon episodes on a recent horror release, and just like all of our other episodes, it might include major spoilers for said horror release, so don't listen to it if you haven't already seen it. You've officially been warned. And if you'd like to hear the full episode, just head on over to patreon.com slash horrorqueers and subscribe today. Without further ado, here is your exclusive Patreon clip. I saw all these world films in theaters. I mm-hmm. liked World quite a bit when I first saw it. Okay. Every time I have rewatched it, I like it mm. less. And yeah. it, it's a thing where it's like you gave you we have the park. We have the park that is open. And every time I watch it, I'm like, God, there are so many missed opportunities with this movie. And yeah. I do think a part of it is because it started moving away from horror and into the action adventure genre. And uh-huh. is there a single set piece that has rivaled even the kitchen set piece of that first movie, right? Like, I said this when I walked out of Jurassic World. I was like, I just wish there was something moderately suspenseful about mm-hmm. this movie. Or a, a single scene that was moderately suspenseful. And that and that and that's been my issue with the world franchise since day one. And I... Got a taste of it in Fallen Kingdom, because I do think J.A. Bayona is a better director than Colin Trevorrow. Agreed. Even though he's a little bit out of his element, maybe with the big budgetness of it all. But Mm -hmm. there are glimpses of it in Fallen Kingdom. And honestly, in Dominion, the only set piece that I'm like, oh, yeah, on the edge of my seat, like, I'm really enjoying this, is the Malta set piece, which, funnily enough, was the one that I was least looking forward to based on the trailers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll agree with everything that you just said. I think that Bayona, especially in that last act where it almost becomes, I'm sure I'm not the first person to say this, but it feels almost like a slasher film in mm-hmm. a mansion with a dinosaur yeah. and in that capacity it does work because it feels more properly horrific and of course if you're not looking at these films for horror then you're probably enjoying them as the sort of big budget action blockbuster that they are but that also feels inconsistent with the origin of the actual franchise which is yes. in suspense tension right yeah i mean those books are gory as fuck those books are horror books i don't care what oh 100 percent. <laughs> yeah michael creighton did sci-fi horror almost exclusively but i guess that's why though like so when everyone's complaining about this latest film and i'm not saying that your complaints are unfounded like by all means a lot of the complaints i've been seeing people spout off like are i, I agree with they are legitimate yeah it's just that I think you and I look at them and we're like, eh, but it seems like you're looking for what the movie was never going to give you. Yes. And it seems like it's just people that really like Jurassic World and have been like, ooh, it's been diminishing return since. Whereas I'm like, ugh, like I was kind of bummed with World from the start. So I, I was happy with anything we got that was moderately good in this movie. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, so. well, we've been dancing around it. Why don't yeah. we actually talk about Dominion? So yeah. I think one of the things that people have raised as a big source of frustration is that Fallen Kingdom ended on, I would not say a cliffhanger, but it opened up the world to dinosaurs, right? They <laughs> broke out, they're no longer in the park, yeah. parks don't exist. And I think everybody went into this new film thinking, we're going to get to see how humans and dinosaurs are interacting across the globe. Yeah. And we don't really get that no we get a five feeling like a 30 minute long prologue of just hey y'all um dinosaurs are in the world but Mm -hmm. yo we acclimated pretty well we think (laughs) yeah you know we've we've had a couple of natural disasters and some people and some species are doing better than others i do love that they opened with that big fish which is like absolutely one of my favorite recurring dinosaurs from the world uh, trilogy but it doesn't do anything (laughs) it doesn't do anything but I I mean, I think immediately this movie signals, hey, not only are you going to have to really suspend your disbelief because we're doing basically James Bond dinosaurs, like we're globe trotting. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, somewhere between James Bond and a Mission Impossible movie at this point. Mm-hmm. And I was okay with that because I thought it opened up some of the action sequences to at least feature a different kind of look. It's not just jungle. It's not just concrete. For the most part. For the first half. (laughs) Yeah, for the first part. And I do think that that's when we get to the Malta sequence, that that's part of the reason that particular section works so well is because it feels like it's a really different kind of action sequence. Well, it's funny because you're comparing it to Mission Impossible and whatever. And I'm like, I walked out of this going, oh, this is the Fast and the Furious 6 of the franchise. Oh. Okay, yeah, yeah, That yeah. is what this felt like to me. Again, and granted, Fast and the Furious 6 is my favorite entry in that franchise. 
Jurassic World mm-hmm. Dominion is not my favorite entry in this <laughs> franchise. No, but but, but mm-hmm. in terms of like again stupidity, big set pieces, like right. kind of like you know uh, uh, blood rushing, like you know excitement. That's what I got from this, and I do. I mean, again, I, I, I do think it's really dumb. We gloss over what should I, this movie should have been about. Let's watch them act like it should have picked up right when Fallen Kingdom left off, and that mm-hmm. we gloss over that is honestly a real bummer and again missed opportunity, which this franchise is filled with. But once, I mean, it's a prologue. Like, once we get that out of the way, I'm like, well, shit, that's not the movie that's I over. want. That's not what we're getting. Yeah. Might as well go along for the ride because we still have two hours and 25 minutes left. Ah, Atlas Avenue. A long stretch of road that encompasses everything the city of Kennet Heights has to offer. Neon lights, traffic, crime... The hustle and bustle of everyday life, and the craziest of characters. My office was above it all. My name is James Locke, and I'm a P.I. Hello, Mr. J. How the hell you doing today? Good, Edith. Nearly every year I have a new case. New people to meet, new clues to discover, and new problems to solve. But I do it the old-fashioned way. No technology. Nothing post-1950. Hell, I don't even listen to podcasts, but you should. Atlas Avenue Beat is a spoof of the film noir genre with goofy characters, tons of wordplay, and non-stop raunchy humor. There's also three whole seasons out right now with more on the way. Just search for Atlas Avenue Beat wherever you listen to podcasts or visit us online at bloody.fm. Hello, I'm Shelby Scott, the host of Scare You to Sleep, a podcast where I tell you spooky bedtime stories full of creepy sound effects and music that is soothing yet unsettling to help immerse you into a world of horror. This is a show for those of us who have realized horror can be a strange but relaxing escape from reality. Speaking of escapes, sometimes I lead you through guided nightmares, like a guided meditation, but instead of flowery meadows, I take you on a journey through your own personal nightmare. So come get lost in the terror with me. Listen to Scare You to Sleep wherever you listen to podcasts or find us online at bloody.fm. Sweet screams. <laughs> 